Determine the end behavior of the given function, blah, blah. All right. So uh, in this particular case, right, we really need to incorporate f of x, let's say equals, okay? Um, so remember this function here that's given, and I'm gonna write, remember f of x you can think of as simply y, all right? So the question's asking, what happens to this y value as the x values in your equation here begin to approach negative infinity, okay, and positive infinity? I know they look like eights, but you know what I mean. Now the first thing you have to do, and you have to make sure of, is that you have this in polynomial form, right, where you see all the terms clearly. In other words, you want it in this kind of a form, where it's like a some term plus b some term plus c plus d, and inside of the a term it could be some crazy thing like x or k x, you know, squared or something. But, you, you know, you, you have to have something where you have these terms that are added or subtracted by one another. Here I have an x squared multiplied by this whole thing. So I don't have it in that form. The first thing is to do that, okay? So just simply distribute now the x squared to every single term. So x squared times 2x cubed is going to be uh, 2x raised to the fifth. Then x squared times negative x is going to be negative x cubed. And then x squared times positive 1 is going to be a positive x squared, okay? Now, all we need to do here is now to analyze our largest degree term, okay? So the important term is now going to be this one right here. That's the highest degree because it has the largest power. The variable has the largest power. I could care less what this is. And you know why I'm choosing this term to analyze and not the rest? Is because as x gets larger and larger, this term is going to dominate the entire function, okay? Right, let's say you take five and raise it to the fifth, and five and raise it to the third. Which term's larger? This one is, right? Okay, now let's say you take 100 raise it to the fifth and 100 raise to the third. Which term's larger? Well, still this term, right? But this term is now even larger than this term than when the value was five. This is still larger than this, but the difference between these two is much, much larger than the difference between these two. In other words, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this term begins to dominate the overall value of the function, okay? So that's why I really don't care about any other term, okay? And this is now what I'm gonna focus on. Now notice here also, this conforms to what I wrote there on the upper right-hand side. I have three terms, okay? And I'm just gonna find the highest degree. So I could care less what this all is, so just don't worry about it, and we're just gonna focus on this. Now, I have a nice little table to help us out. Take a look. Bam. Okay, so now the first thing to do is to determine whether that degree of your polynomial here is even or odd. This is easy, right? Five, it's odd. So you're gonna be focusing on the right-hand side. Okay, one of these two graphs here in general will represent the function. Then what you have to do is determine what the leading coefficient sign is. And the sign in here is positive, right? So you have a positive leading coefficient and you have an odd power, all right, odd degree. So this graph will now represent the general shape and the general behavior of your given function, okay? Might not it's not gonna match it perfectly, but what I will guarantee is this is what will match perfectly. As x gets, as x gets uh, larger and larger in the negative direction, meaning as x approaches negative infinity, the y value will also approach negative infinity. I guarantee that. As x then approaches positive infinity, the y value will begin to approach positive infinity. I guarantee that, okay? Now, that's basically the answer to the question when it says to determine the end behavior. In other words, when x approaches then negative infinity, right, as it moves out further and further to the left, what happens to the function's value? The function's value then approaches negative infinity, cool? Conversely, as x approaches now positive infinity, right, as x approaches positive infinity to the right, the y value is also approaching positive infinity, okay? And that would kind of be the answer. That's the end behavior. Now, if you don't trust me still, use your calculator. Plug it on in, plug in your function. Now, plug in the original function. Maybe we made a mistake somewhere. So just go back and plug in the original function. And if we didn't make a mistake, it should come out exactly as I suggest it should. So x squared, then open parenthesis. So 2x raised to the third, 
Okay, then you're gonna bring that cursor back down, so hit the over button, then minus X, and then plus one. Okay, close your parenthesis. Now hit graph. Huh, look at that, right? As I said, it doesn't match like the zeros here, like this crosses, you know, the graph three times. This might not, It meaning cross the x-axis three times. This may not, it all depends, okay? But what I guaranteed you was that if you look here closely going, you know, as this function goes to the left, you see the y values going down. And as the function goes to the right, as x becomes larger in the positive direction, the y value will become larger, okay? If you still don't like that, go to second graph. Bring up your table, okay? Let's go back down to zero. And let's see what happens, okay? So we start at zero, let's now go in the negative direction. So as X is going to negative infinity, what's happening to Y? It's also going to negative infinity, right? I mean, you can clearly see that. That's exactly what I said over here. Then as X now goes to positive infinity, what's happening to the Y values? They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger, and bigger right? That's exactly what we said over here. There you go. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hopefully that helps. Look forward to helping you with more problems in the future. And if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, it helps us out tremendously. And even better, maybe recommending our channel to, you know, some of your classmates, someone you know. You know, maybe even your parents, or grandparents, and, you know, whoever else, somebody on the street, you know, you see, long lost cousin. Doesn't matter, right? Everybody wants to know math. Take care.